there is no impact. Well, there are other passages that tell us that the Holy Spirit dwells within, Romans 8, 8 and 9, Galatians 3, 2, Galatians 4, 6, 1 John 3, 24 through 4, 4. Well, I want to move another step now, and this is the important issue. The fact that the Holy Spirit dwells in every believer is a doctrine. It is a doctrine of pneumatology. Its correct nomenclature is the salvation work of the Holy Spirit. And there are four things that the Holy Spirit does for every one of us the moment we trust in Christ. He seals us, that's our eternal security. He puts us into Christ, that's our position, union with Christ. He indwells us, and uh, let's see, sealing, indwelling, baptism, and he regenerates us. Four things. So this is the salvation work of the Holy Spirit. All four of these things happen simultaneously. They are, theologically speaking, coterminous. They all occur at the same time. Now, many, many times I have talked to you about a doctrine. And a doctrine is a very academic thing. And we must have the doctrine in the frontal lobe. We must know doctrine. So as far as doctrine is concerned, I try to teach you doctrine so that you will know it. But knowing it isn't enough. We must also apply it. And biblically speaking, we call that wisdom. We call it application. Now, here is the application of this doctrine. You see, doctrine must have a reality as far as life is concerned. Do you know that you could sit in a church for 50 years just like a bump on a log with the same sour expression, with the same miserable feeling, with the same mental attitude, planning what you're going to do when you get out, or planning what you're going to wear next week at the ball, or whatever it happens to be? You can go, you can rock along like that for 50 years and get old and never do one single cotton-picking thing for the Lord. Did you know that? And there are so many believers like that that once in a while I'm tempted to go down and to get them and to shake them to see if they're real. How can people listen to the Word of God week after week after week and rock along the same old way, huh? I don't know how they can do it, but it happens every day. Now, here's a tremendous fact. God, the Holy Spirit, dwells inside of us. But that in itself is not enough. There must be an application of this to experience. And so, by way of applying this to our experience, we have a number of passages which command us to be filled with the Spirit. Passages like... Ephesians 5.18, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Or one we'll find in Romans 13, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Or, one like we have uh, over in Galatians 5.16, Walk by means of the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So whether it's called putting on the Lord Jesus Christ or walking by means of the Spirit or being filled with the Spirit, it all adds up to the same thing. It adds up to God the Holy Spirit controlling the square, taking over the entire square. Now, we've already had this in the past, so I'm not going into all the details of how to be filled with the Spirit tonight. Uh, it actually involves some very simple things from the negative standpoint. It's quench not the Spirit and grieve not the Spirit. And all the negative tells us is the fact that you can do nothing to be filled with the Spirit. I can't be filled with the Spirit because I pray for it. I can't be filled with the Spirit because I agonize. I can't be filled with the Spirit because I get on an emotional jag and have an ecstatic experience. I cannot be filled with the Spirit because I observe certain taboos. I am not filled with the Spirit because I crucify self, which is also an impossibility. Self does not cancel out self. The only way to be filled with the Spirit is by faith. And that involves believing 1 John 1, 9, rebound, and then simply believing the Word. I thought all of you would enjoy that little trip down memory lane. I think the best... Uh statement I heard, guess at the time, was that was a long time ago. You can tell by the 
recording. That was on December the 20th, 1956. So that comes off of some tapes that my parents had from that time. 